Welcome back to the StatCast series on creating a to-do app with Laravel. If you haven't seen our previous videos, be sure to watch those. Uh, they're really helpful and you won't really be able to get much out of this unless you follow those previous videos. Also, if you're enjoying the series so far, be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any other free programming videos that we make. Alright, so let's get started on this. So we can currently create, complete, and delete tasks. However, when we try to create a task with an empty description, we get an error. Let's see what happens. So we're getting an integrity constraint violation. Description cannot be null. Uh, task description is required. Let's take a look at the structure of our task table and let's see why that's happening. If we take a look at our description, we can see that it does not allow for a null value. So we're creating a SQL error and that's why we're getting this constraint violation. How can we verify that the data that the user is sending to us is correctly formatted? Well, we can do that using Laravel validation. We can validate easily the user input. Let's take a look at that. We're on the Laravel documentation page for validation, and we can see that we have a lot of validation stuff that we could do within Laravel. We can easily validate the logic by taking a request and passing in an array. So as we've seen in our previous videos that we can just take the request and we can return it by taking this all by using this all uh, helper method. So let's try uh, just returning all of the request data. Let's see what we have. So as we saw before in our previous video that we're, we're sending along a token, which is our CSRF protection, but we're also seeing that our description is in fact null. So how do we check for this and how do we prevent this from being sent to our database? So we could actually just type validate and all we need to do is type in a set of rules and that accepts an array. We just specify what input we want to validate for. So we're going to validate for the description and we want to make sure that it is required. So with these short lines, we now have form validation on our uh, controller method. So we're validating that the description is required. So let's try resubmitting an empty description and let's see what happens. Well, we're not seeing anything. And why is that? Well, what happens when the validation fails is it'll return back to your previous screen that you were on, so your previous route, in our case, task create, and it is going to pass back errors, but we're not accessing those errors. How can we access those errors? So to check for errors, all we need to do is say, uh, if errors any, and if, and I'll say that we have, we have errors, or else we do not have errors. So we don't have any errors when we have a blank load, a fresh load of this task create screen. So uh, what happens if we submit it now with our empty description? Okay, we have errors. Great, this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. So let's get rid of this else statement. So if we wanted to actually print our errors, we could do a print R and let's just see what we have. So we have errors all, just like we did with request all, we could do errors all and let's see what we have. So currently nothing. Okay, it looks like we're getting a, an array of errors and it looks like the description field is required. Perfect. So I think that we could just loop through our errors. So using a for each blade directive, we could say for each errors all as error and for each, we could do li with error. Close that li. So let's try it again. Okay, so now we're seeing our description field is required. Just to make this semantically correct, I want to actually put this in an unordered list. So let's try creating a task again with the empty description. Perfect. All right. Let's see what we can do about styling up our error feedback here. So we can do a component and we can check out right here under alerts. So using bootstrap, we can see that we have a couple alert message options. So I like this red one here. Let's take a look and uh, it's right here. We can see that we have our alert 
It's just a div with the class of alert and alert danger with a role of alert. Let's actually just copy this, paste this in above our list, and let's close that div. Now let's refresh this one more time and let's try and submit it again. Okay, so we're seeing the description field is required. Perfect. So what happens if I submit this? Let's try that again. Perfect. So I have my task. I can complete it and delete it. Perfect. Okay, so what now, one thing I wanted to take a look at is what happens if we submit a really long task description? So this is a long uh, task description. So I can just say this is a long description. And I'm just going to copy that and paste that in a couple times. All right, let's see what happens when we submit this. Okay, so the data is truncated, data too long for column description. Why is this happening? So we're seeing the data is too long for column description at row one, insert to task, the column description is too long. So let's take a look at our database again. And as we saw here, we saw that it is not allowing for null. So we handled that. And we're seeing that the max length is 255. So if we wanted to add another validation rule, we could just do um, on our task controller, back in our task controller, we can chain together a couple of validation rules by using a long line. And we can say uh, max or yeah required and max is 255. So if I refresh this, resubmit it, it'll refill, it'll resend the long description that we sent and it'll give us back another error of the description may not be greater than 255 characters. Awesome, so it looks like that's working. So if I try to submit an empty one, that description field is required. And if I do a really long one, if I do a really long task, let's try that out. Let's add that in a couple times. Okay, the description may not be greater than 255 characters, perfect. So we can also check for a specific field uh, this is kind of overkill for such a small form, but I'll show you what we can do if we wanted to add feedback right next to the form inputs. We could just do another blade directive of error and pass the name of the field, so the description, and we could just say div class equals alert, alert dash danger, and the role is uh, alert, and let's close the div. And, and then just type end error. And we could just say, what's the message for this field? What's the error message? What's the error message? So let's resend this again. So I just need to change this to the name of the description, to the value of our name attribute on our input that we're validating. So I just change that to description. And resend it. Okay, perfect. So we're getting two ways of handling errors. We could either display it at the top of our form, or we could handle this. Uh, we could have our error messages display right next to our inputs. If we have multiple inputs, a long form, like a maybe like a, an application of some sorts, and it had that has multiple fields, like ten or twenty fields, you'd probably want to do it like this. However, for such a short form, we could just probably remove this. And I think having the error at the top is going to be enough for our validation purposes. So with this validation in place, I think that's gonna be it for the series. Uh, thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos and series on Laravel and other programming languages. Uh, we have a lot of great stuff coming out about JavaScript, uh, modern JavaScript programming, React, Laravel, uh, PHP for beginners, so if this course went a little too fast, we're also gonna be releasing beginner courses for people just getting started out with programming and PHP. Uh, you can take a look at statcast.com and sign up for our newsletter for free and receive weekly updates about our latest content. Uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the series, please give this video a like. It'll really help out the YouTube algorithm and it'll allow us to keep creating videos like this for free in the future. And if you wanted to leave a comment down below letting us know what you think about the course, how we could have improved. Also, follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash and thanks for watching. Bye, guys.